today's which word of the day is affirmation. It's a noun. The assertion that something is true, it exists, and you believe in it. Affirmations are a powerful tool in witchcraft as they serve as a constant reminder that there is a limitless power in your intent and belief. State who you want to be or what you want to accomplish as if it is already so. For example, I let go of the past. I am respected. I got the job. Such affirmations are the very beginnings of manifesting your desires. I have to say desires all sexy. Desires. <laughs> You haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. Can you hear the words of the witches? Yeah. The words of the witches. Welcome to Words of the Witches, the charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser known published lore of the charmed universe. In this night and in this hour, we call upon our fanboy power bringing education and stupefaction to all of you. Together, we will use our knowledge and reverence abundantly, but also find ourselves sassy and delightful. Which is why we will truly be charmed. charmed. All right, here we are at Words of the Witches, episode 112. I'm Kevin, your resident charmed resource. And I'm Sean, and I just love the supernatural. And let me introduce our guest this week. This person, I know, this person is profoundly eloquent, has gained much acclaim, you know, super popular, um, much smarter than Sean and I combined, uh, <laughs> and, and is just full of good witchy activism. This is the Witch of Southern Light, Marshall. Hello. <laughs> Hello. That's that's quite an introduction. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hello, everyone. I am Marshall, uh, Witch of Southern Light. I am a queer Texas witch. Um, and uh, author of Cunning Words. I also have a podcast as well called Southern Bramble, a podcast of Crooked Ways, where we talk about uh, being queers who do witchcraft. So it's super, super fun. And super. I need to tell you, I am a huge Charmed fan. Um, it's my comfort show. I pretty much watch it uh, anytime I am needing to just <laughs> recharge myself. I've seen probably every episode more times than I can count. Nice. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah, great. How did you discover Charmed? Was it something you watched while it was actively on? Or Yes. Um, I literally remember going into my mother's room as probably like an elementary or middle schooler watching on their little tv that still had like the vcr connected oh, to the yeah. box <laughs> because they had the living room tv for the time and i was like it's seven o'clock i have to watch this followed by popular on the wb <laughs> <laughs> yes you know you remember i know like, popular absolutely yeah. something i also Those can't hardly wait through. actors <laughs> oh, truly i also watched it all the while um i found it on youtube uh during quarantine and covid so i was just like charmed popular it's like i'm a child again that's, no the life. <laughs> that's so cool well thank you i love that um so what about because you are a very experienced witch practitioner pagan person <laughs> what got you in which got you into that to begin with what introduced you or started up you off on that path i started really young so of course you know like so many which is I started with Wicca. Um, I remember being in middle school and coming across like the spirituality section in a bookstore. And I was like, what is this? What? Like, these are books on real witchcraft, but hold on a minute. Like it was <laughs> such a huge realization for me that there was actually like a religion out there. Mind you, I was really struggling at the time. Um, I wasn't even out as gay to the world, let alone myself. So um, I was really trying to find who I was, and I'd always been obsessed with witches. I remember making like potions with my great grandparents' parsley in styrofoam cups in the backyard <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, I watched Hocus Pocus and Wizard of Oz and literally tried to fly a broom more times than I'm proud of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just so natural to be very gravitated toward this as a spirituality. And um, I kind of grew from there, learned a lot more. I got very into, of course, a lot of the original Buckland, uh, Silver Raven Wolf, 
Teen Witch, you know, uh, uh, Scott Cunningham. And then as I got older, a lot of like my ideas around this started to evolve. And then in my 30s, I learned a lot about much more like traditional witchcraft and folkloric witchcraft. And that really started to change my perception of, of my spirituality. And it opened me up to a lot of more doors into uh, folklore and history and trial records. And I just became so enamored and impassioned by learning about this history and, and allowing it to kind of seep in and inform my modern day practice. I'm actually kind of jealous because when I was little and I was playing Magic the Gathering, my grandma was like, this is the devil's game. And meanwhile, you were making <laughs> potions with your grandparents. That's so cool. I know. <laughs> you know, my grandma herself, um, she was a very live off the land person that a huge vegetable garden, a greenhouse with all these herbs in it. You know, the mo the majority of what she she grew she consumed they had chickens they had guinea hens it was it was very living on the land and i remember a lot of little things that she would do um from her garden or uh i had a splinter and she would put raw bacon on there and it would like pull it out um i think there's actually like an actual chem chemistry yeah there, there's a chemical reason why the salt would actually help actually extract it but it was a impure thing pulls out the impure thing so she literally put a piece of raw bacon on my finger and put a band-aid over it and said there you go it'll come out by morning and so like <laughs> it, it, there were a lot of little things that were just um she didn't even get into the church until she was very very old and had cancer and was dying she was always a very exploratory person um so i felt like i was grateful enough to have a a supportive family for the most part there were some struggles every now and again we will do our p is for poll results from last week the question was what makes you feel beautiful because we had talked about glamour magic last episode we only got two responses so nothing crazy <laughs> and only did on instagram not on the other one <laughs> so the first one says from nicholas wendell who this was our person who went to the set from charmed and he responded says someone smiling at me <laughs> which is nice and then d dot nuded says be naked <laughs> so <laughs> being natural and nude makes me feel beautiful i'm like why not okay there you go yeah that's so ta-da <laughs> ta <-da>. so, <laughs> ta so let's get it ta-tas <laughs> ba ba boom yes <laughs> what's in my witch's chest yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the next section of this book. This is, once again, The Book of Shadows, The Unofficial Charmed Companion by N.E. Genge. And we are doing section four, A Time for Spells. Marshall, did you ever see this book before? Do you have memories of this book, or are you just experiencing it for the first time? I'm honestly just experiencing it for the first time. Um... I got it when you reached out and I was like, let me see what this is all about. And yeah. I flipped through a little bit and there were some really actually interesting things. And then there were some things that I'm like, oh, I have a different opinion on the matter. But of course, like every witch, we all have our own yeah. ways and ways yep. and gaze of practicing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess let's just jump right in. The first thing that I wanted to talk about were the spell casting steps that they laid out. Uh, I'm just going to say them all, and then if you have, want to comment on any of them, go ahead. So this one says, it starts with preparation of self, uh, preparation of space, dressing the space where you're doing the extra, creating the ambiance. Then we have spell casting, which, which is the actual ritual. And then you close the space, and then you, you ground where you reacclimate to your daily life and kind of contemplate on your spell. I mean, as a witch, um, it's a lot. <laughs> um, it, that's that's a lot and to be perfectly honest i do think that it is most likely this person that the person who wrote the book I, i'm i'm gonna assume is a neo-pagan practitioner a uh a, 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 probably identifies as a wiccan which is all great but at the same time i do notice some very specific uh wiccan elements that are a little different from like say traditional witchcraft or folk craft um I found that a lot of the things make sense, the prep, uh, preparation of self, preparation of space, uh, dressing the space, spell casting, closing the space. That all makes sense. Um, and, and I do a lot of that in my practice, but it's not quite as involved as this is, if that makes sense. Um, 
I think that there is a lot of early emphasis on grounding and centering the beginning and grounding and centering at the end. And I do feel that that makes sense for certain rituals, especially bigger things that involved longer periods of time spent doing a, a, a rite or maybe a celebration if it's a Sabbath. But when it comes down to directly just casting a, a simple spell, um, this is a lot more than I usually do. Too much. Ca yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too much. Casting a circle is is sometimes something, but again, that's definitely much more of like a, a, a Wiccan tradition in, in that specific religion. And a lot of times in folk magic, you really, you know, folks are the people and the people are doing what they can with a lot of the the tools they have at hand in their homes so a lot of times that's nails that's string that's scissors uh that's pins that's sewing things um and that really wouldn't involve casting circles for everything uh that may not always involve you know uh, always centering yourself always grounding yourself uh sometimes i might take a moment to just get in the right headspace, breathe it in. I have a specific chant that I might say while lighting my candles and incense. And then I call upon my own personal spirit court and then I cast the spell. And then I have a very simple kind of like license to depart that, that makes sense to me. And then from there on, I snuff out the candles and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy peasy. I mean, I was, I was never like a very devout magic person practitioner like i didn't do a lot of it in my youth i did more but i was more just like i'm gonna write something that you know gets the point of what i'm trying to do make mm -hmm. it a nice rhyme because that's pretty and then you know maybe light a candle and ta-da <laughs> yeah that's so ceremonial i'm noticing most of what i was seeing here was very ceremonial it was very heavy and and um a lot of time devoted <laughs> and a lot of times mm -hmm. really simple spells or charm bags that's you're really not devoting it a ton of time sometimes you do especially if you're working on something that involves devoting time uh but not everything does if that makes sense yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it did say that to always incorporate an element of personal protection into your magic whenever you do anything mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel about that you know i think protection is a wonderful thing that any practitioner who's going to practice magic should already have multiple layers of in fact we actually just did a whole episode on protection magic that came out last week um oh, so nice. people go and check that out on southern bramble a podcast for crooked ways um but i am a big believer in multiple protections i'm a witch i am transversing within the other world the spirit world that means in general i am a beacon of light in a darker space or a more liminal space that attracts things even though i'm not calling them when i'm calling them i'm putting out a call a lot of things might hear it including the thing i'm bringing forth so it makes sense just in general that we should be protecting ourselves and when i like talk about that i mean home protections like literal protections for the space and and uh perimeter of my home uh personal protections i wear a, a little pinnacle all the time i never take it off uh, maybe protections with uh, threads and knots and anklets or bracelets i have a little evil eye earring here someone might suggest a witch bottle buried in your yard or somewhere behind a water heater where it's not going to get found by anyone um i think protection should always be a thing Absolutely. Have you ever had an incident where like you didn't have the best protections and something did happen? You know, I actually recently talked, uh, I recently spoke about this. It was really interesting. I had COVID uh, about a month and a half ago or two months ago. And just as I was getting better, um, I threw my back out. It was so strange. Like nothing yeah. happened whatsoever. And I've had like aches and, and it cricks my back before, but I'm talking about screaming just to stand up until oh I gosh. could stand up. It, it was, it was horrifying. It was the worst thing I'd ever experienced. And it was so strange. I remember laying on the couch and screaming to get up. And then I happened to look over and my evil eye earring had fallen out of my ear and was laying over on the couch somewhere. And we had just had an episode with Phoebe Hildegard, a practitioner here in Texas as well. And she had talked about when protections fall or break off of the body, especially very specific ones. And usually a lot of times that's that the sign of that is it's taken a hit for you. Um, it's, it's now down for the count. You need a new one and you need one soon. And it's best to give like either a burial or, or a, a, a a couple of kind words and a thank you to the talisman that helped you that took the hit for you and you need to make a new one 
it was so strange literally almost like a week before this had happened i'd have that interview and then this some was something that happened to me and i am someone that does have a public face you know i have um I, i've written a book i have a podcast i i put my face out there on the internet on my social media a lot uh, there are some people that have gone on the block list that i unfortunately <laughs> um do not have access to me anymore and um i think that might make some some folks mad i think i say a lot of things sometimes uh with my opinions that some people don't like so uh, whether that was on purpose, whether that is jealousy, whether that is, uh, um, not that I'm saying people are, but right. like when it comes to evil eye work, um, that can be envy, that can be anger, that can be something of a passing maligning glance. So at the time I just said, you know what, no matter what it is, I'm going to make myself a new earring. I'm going to ice my back and I'm going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. and so fascinating. And yeah, cause you even like, because I have this problem sometimes too, where people like will make fake profiles of you and try to like take advantage of other people. It's oh, like, da- it's horrible. a daily occurrence. It's, yeah. it's so annoying. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So we do have, this is going to be kind of a, our rhyme time. Pretty much this entire thing that we're covering today is a big rhyme time, but <laughs> um, this oh, is yeah. the, the one uh, from the, the talk about the Woogie Man spell, which this is, probably like the first one of the first charm spells that i memorized and this loved it's just so perfect and i I, this book actually kind of lays it out probably why i liked it so much but the spell is i mean from memory i am light i am one too strong to fight return to dark where shadows dwell you cannot have this hallow well go away and leave my sight and take with you this endless night (laughs) and i like that because this book praises that spell for showing how it incorporates incorporates the framework of all ritual um, they say how I am light is the self-awareness, how I am one too strong to fight invokes a will that prevents evil to enter. And then uh, everything else gives the, the overall direct statement of what their desire is in a way that can't be misconstrued. So it's a really wonderful spell from Charmed that I liked, that they liked. <laughs> I love it too, actually. The only thing that the only thing that I want to do is change it so I can use it for myself too, because I'm not a Hallowell. <laughs> Right. I need to find something else that rhymes with dwell. I'll get my, I'll get my thesaurus out later. <laughs> I believe, um, you know, Phoenix and Siren from WBR, which bitches review podcast. Oh yeah, um, of I've, course. I've been on their I've, show too. Yeah, yeah you're on their show. Uh, I believe Phoenix said that he did rework that when he was younger. I'm going to have to check that so, out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so then we move on to the spells that were in the book. We're not going to go over every spell. A lot of them just have, you know, how to do these. Uh, I'm going to go over what kind of spells they had. And then if we have anything to say about them, we can get into them. Uh, So the first grouping of spells were protection spells. We talked a little bit about that already. Uh, Anything you want to say about anything in here? You know, I was looking at the triple circle. I have to admit, this is one of those that for me either is, is foreign and I have not heard of it specifically. Um, it's again it seemed like a lot um <laughs> it, it did the triple like again the the casting of a triple circle it had a lot of steps to it it involved uh, it involved multiple tools for me i've never found myself in a situation where this was something specific i would need um the only time i would ever actually start casting any real circles or in my craft i call it a, it's a compass right we are calling up the four corners and creating a crossroads it's a sacred place uh to actually do magic in and in that space i am protected because it's within the crossroads and a lot of times again i'm protecting myself as well i actually have a something called a witch's cord um it's a specific cord that i braided together with really thick um red almost like rope but like thick embroidery threads so it's like i mean it's like you know a good thickness and i have I made it while weaving it under the full moon while chanting a very specific chant at midnight. It was a very specific spell, but because I was creating this at a very specific time and then I took up the little, the, the knots on the end and I would hold it up to the moon and capture the moon's power by tightening in it while it was in my, my sight. And I would do that with both ends. And so when I created that, that, uh, uh, cord itself became my witch's cord, and it's full of the moon's magic on either side. 
So I can work with the full moon at any time. Um, there are certain times that I want to actually work with the moon phase, but if I wanted to capture and use its power, that's how I did it with this. And I actually tie it around myself when I do a lot of ritual work as a protection of my actual body. Um, so I think that a lot of this work that was done with, this is my personal opinion, the, with the triple circle uh, was more than I think I would do in most situations. But I'm also not fighting demons on um, <laughs> the WB or, you know, executive producers. Yes. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought the protection from Gossip or Slander was very reminiscent of Kat Sakard's spell that she gave in her episode about, like, you know, putting the name of your person who's bothering you in a, a water and freeze it and get that person out of your, you know, subconscious kind of thing, which was fun. Um, I, like, I like that one. Yeah. And then they have the protection from a specific threat. And this is where they talk about charmed specifically they talk about thank you for not morphing about the, the shapeshifters and uh the power of two with jackson ward banishing a spirit and they give this really badly rhymed spell with, which was translated from french or something that i didn't like <laughs> many banishment spells support the belief in evil entities but most witches don't embrace those views um, and then they give an example of each kind of belief in charmed so how do we feel I think that actually explains what I was talking about earlier with um, yeah. this having a very wicked influence where they kind of rebuke any sort of negativity or evil spirit or the devil of any kind. Um, that's not me. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I personally feel like with all dark comes the light. Um, I think that the show did a really, really fun aspect of making good witches at a time that we needed a lot of positive light about wicca in the first place let's be real this was the 90s yeah. this was coming out of the satanic panic of the 80s um this was something that i probably think in 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 my very humble opinion probably saved the progression of wicca uh, uh yeah. from from kind of floundering at a certain time that that it could have uh and so you needed a, a dark and a light and a good and evil but when it comes to being a witch we kind of work with both um a lot of times so I definitely believe in making sure that I'm, say, putting up protections from evil things, that I might uh, want to send something after someone who's trespassed me in, in, in an aggressive way. Um, you kind of work with both. So I can see why you might need to banish something at the end if they're not wanting to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if send something after you. Yeah. And then there's the whole, like, shadow work stuff where it's, like, really embracing your darkness and finding the strength in that and... Yeah, yeah abso absolutely. I do think shadow work and, and embracing the entirety of yourself is the only way in which you can honestly look authentically at your own thoughts, wants, and desires and, and be realistic about what they are. Yeah. You can't gaslight yourself. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So now we're into the love spells. And mm. most of these... I know. Um, they have three, to become lovable and to bring like-minded people into your life, which was nice. It's going back on the thing where casting love spells on yourself, for yourself, not as, mm -hmm. as not necessarily like seeking out or putting spells on other people, um, which is nice. Except for this to find love. That was very Disney. This it felt very Disney. Like, my one true love. I'm going to search the entire world for my one true yeah. love. <laughs> I'm like, okay. That's the one. You only get one. <laughs> well, I'm moving to India. That's where they are. <laughs> that's it. I spun the globe, and that's where the dart landed. Yep. yep. <laughs> so that was a little right hokey. That one was a little hokey for me, but... <laughs> You know, it's interesting. I have some very interesting opinions on love magic. Um, per, so first off, I'm aromantic, so I am uninterested okay. in relationships or dating. Um, um, I am my best boyfriend I've ever had. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it comes to love magic, I don't do a lot because uh, I'm not interested. But I have in the past when I was younger. Um, I have some opinions on it now that I know a lot of history, which is really fascinating. I don't really have a lot of strong opinions about casting love spells. Um, I think that's none of my business. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I do think we should always take stock in when we are messing with people's free will. I do think that a lot of unintended consequences can come from that. Um, funny enough, I think that 
well, interestingly enough, I think that the the, the movie The Craft demonstrated yeah. a oh, yeah. very interesting twist on what it means to put a love spell on someone, especially someone specific. Um, love can look like a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and the way it's felt and the way it's acted upon uh, can be very up in the air if you're not specific, especially with your magic and what you want. So I personally am, I love the idea of like self-love spells. Um, I actually wrote about one recently that's coming up in my next book, The Red Mother, out October 1st, plug. Um, but uh, I do think that self-love magic and magic of attracting someone towards you is wonderful. I always think a lot of times if you could change yourself or your perception around something within your spellcraft, it's a better way to approach than trying to purposely change other things. That involves a lot of more strings and a lot of more um, behind it. So that's kind of what I think about it. And to be perfectly honest, there's a long history within love magic, especially in the United States or in oppressed people's uh, histories where love magic might have been the one thing that protected them. You know, um, women couldn't have a bank account mm -hmm. until 1972, 73. Uh, we didn't get women's suffrage and the first was of course only white women's suffrage not not black women having the right to vote so there's a long history of women being oppressed um and there were times where you might need a little bit of help to make sure that oh what i can't inherit oh i'm not going to be the head of my household oh i can't just go off on my own and do what i want to do and fall in love with who i want to fall in love with because society has deemed me not able um, to have that freedom so love magic historically was really a lot about pulling people out of oppressive mm -hmm. uh, uh lifestyles or not lifestyles but oppressive situations and and marginalization so they had the freedom afterwards to not just survive but hopefully thrive yeah, that's so beautiful. And I remember I saw one of your your videos about that on your page, which was I was hoping you would bring up. So it was. Good. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I like that here they talk about how to become lovable is a way to rid yourself of your self doubt and adhere to your like your own standards of what you think you should be or what people will be attracted to, which was really really nice. Absolutely. I mean, that's also great with like self confidence charms. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. uh there's a lot of ways you can mix psychology with magic as well. You can start, uh, you can literally list a positive uh, list, back to affirmations, right? You can literally <laughs> make a list of all the positive things you truly love about yourself. Um, you can roll it up, you can put it in a charm bag. Uh, you could add uh, something like lavender or rose or sugar to sweeten and then carry that with you as a self-confidence charm. And you can smell it, you can smell that lavender, you can mm. smell those rose petals in there. And you can remember everything you single wrote on that piece of paper that's in there when like before you're getting up to go speak in front of someone before you're going out on a date um before you're getting to see friends and you're just kind of feeling down about yourself there are a lot of ways that you can kind of mix the mental and the magical together so this was a perfect segue into our working element uh <laughs> and this is pretty much i i guess i could read it in the book what it says in the book it says some of the banishments undertaken by the hallowells have been examples of spontaneous ritual a sort of Guerrilla spellcasting that might leave the impression that defensive spells are ritual less. Yet when a specific individual was to be banished in the witch's back, considerable ritual was undertaken, as much as required for a love spell. How might a witch's familiarity with her subject affect her ritual? Her or his or theirs. <laughs> um, yep. Would knowing a specific person as the target of a spell seem to require more or less contemplation before taking action? So I thought that was kind of an interesting question. I think that's a great question. Yeah. Um, it's something I've been pondering myself a lot lately, especially in a world where historically a lot of times things were local. You really only knew your villagers. You know, you only knew <laughs> your town, your city. Everything was very like if you were to cast something in someone's footstep, you could go to their front door and leave it there. Like there were a lot of times where when you did magic for someone on someone with someone, they were someone within your actual known vicinity. Um, that, of course, worked the opposite way with the accusatory finger. If you thought someone had done something on you, you would assume they were in your vicinity. But now here we are with a, a, a globalization, the internet. Uh, the things that plague us sometimes are more large. They're in government. They're, they're in politics. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in religion. They're, they're in movements that are so much bigger sometimes than one person. I myself have tried to do work on some of those larger things, and I do find unless there is a massive amount of practitioners doing something uh, uh, towards a singular goal, 
um, I think that's a lot harder to push. Um, it's kind of like throwing a rock into a small pond. It makes a lot of waves. Um, they're very visible. They really affect that environment. But if you throw that same rock into a massive ocean, that's not going to make much of a much of a piddle, you know. So. I think that knowing or having a tangible item of, of your target or, or what you're needing, I mean, they did need Balthazar's flesh for, for uh, <laughs> vanquishing him. I do think that really connects with the idea of a tag lock, a piece of hair, a hair tie, a, a toothbrush. I mean, it's been a baggie. But <laughs> I think this is where sometimes a picture or a printed out signature from the internet may not cut it. And I'm trying to think too, like if it would be, I guess it depends on what kind of spell you're doing. If you're doing like a banishment or like a healing, um, mm -hmm. but like if you have a personal connection to somebody, would it be, would it hurt more to like, say you have to banish them because say you have this whole relationship with them, this whole history together. And now you're at a point where they are causing you harm or discomfort mm -hmm. and you, but you, have, you can't take it lightly either because maybe there's a, a chance to salvage that relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's really a tricky kind of slope. I've done that, actually. Um, it was, it took years to get to that point yeah. where I decided yeah. that was necessary. Um, she lives in another state now, which is just fine with me. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, we did have to get to a point where this is not only salvageable, I'm sickened by your presence in my right. life. Sickened. And I could not get away from them. Um, I don't want to say why that might give away too much just in case, in case, in case by chance yeah. they ever happen to be listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, they are no longer in my life. I am happy about it. I hope they never come back. Okay. But I do think that it, to do something like that, it's not something you do frivolously. Right. Um, so I, I see what they're kind of saying when it says like a gorilla spell casting, um, because I do know some practitioners who will kind of, uh, uh, come up with incantations on on the spot when they're working on something they, they they're very uh, uh inspired in their practice um i i prefer to be a little bit more prepared but i do think that it does involve something a little bit bigger if you're going to make that much of an effect in reality if that makes sense yeah it does bring up a memory like related maybe not the same but i did have um an ex who just kind of broke up with me out of the blue. They didn't really give me any reasons. They just cut me off. And I had a really hard time getting over it. And I was starting to talk to a practitioner at the time, and she found two cords on me. So we found one of them was attached to him and one was attached to my sister, who at the time was going through some mental stuff. You know, she was not mentally sound. So I was devoting all my energy to these two people and not taking care of myself. So along these lines, it's interesting just by talking to someone who is in touch with the arts, like you can kind of zero in on what's taking your energy and focus on yourself a little bit more. Absolutely. All right. So then we got into the wealth and happiness spells. And these were spells that were used to empower you for a job, bless your business, um, or asking for guidance. Um, um, I actually found it very interesting. Um, I definitely wanted to get into the the asking for guidance divination because I thought some yeah. of those were fascinating, and I also thought some of them were like, "That's going to take a very long, a whole candle." <laughs> the rainwater one, yeah, waiting for it to like, rain. Yeah. <laughs> waiting, okay, so this is what's so fascinating. Uh, I am huge into um, like job spells, work spells. Mm. Uh, I have a very specific necklace that I have charmed myself to, or enchanted it to encourage my clients to feel the need to want to uh, be generous for my services. Um, it's specifically charmed to make them want me to be compensated well, uh, to, to feel as though I am giving them exactly what they want. Um, I want to make sure everyone that's in my chair, honestly, is, is not just I say entertain. I'm a hairstylist, by the way, just in case people didn't know that uh, by day. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's I call it my big tipper necklace because <laughs> uh, I usually wear it every day to work. Um, it's made of pearls and citrine. Citrine has a long history mm -hmm. uh, with prosperity and wealth. Um, so I, I enchanted it to encourage people to make sure that I am compensated well. Um, and I think that's just fine. Uh, I also think that 
I, I noticed you said happiness spells or happiness magic. I think that's interesting. And there was a whole episode about uh, putting patches on your emotions, which is what I should have learned from when I tried to help a friend of mine uh, a couple years ago, having a difficult time with a family member. And he was just very, very depressed, down. Um, and I was experimenting with a very specific working where I would make a long story short, basically help numb that pain for a period of three days and feel nothing but joy and bliss. And it was interesting because for the net, and, and there were multiple things that I did with that, which was a much larger spell. Um, but within, I think within the next couple of days, we had a weekend mm -hmm. and I mean, it was like, it was like all that family drama was just not happening. We had a great pool day. We went out to a movie. We went out to dinner. We had just a few of these days of this, this just kind of bliss. And I was like, oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is going to help him get through this. Um, well, three days went by. And he on the fourth day, he called me up just absolutely bawling, crying up a storm. It was the most intense I'd feel him say this. And he told me. Um, he's like, I have no idea where this is coming from. I just can't bottle it anymore. And it was kind of like, oops, um, <laughs> my bad. Uh, and I like, I, I told, I mean, he knew what I was working on. I didn't think the idea of, and this is what was so strange to me. The fact that it happened within three days of, of me casting that, uh, yeah. And the fact that he told me specifically, I have no idea this came from. I thought I was handling this just fine. It's been great this past, like the past few days. Um, and I ended up going over there. We had a night with each other and he just kind of like let it all out. But it was a really heavy emotional night. And so it was one of those moments where it was a learning experience for me. I mean, I know Sean too, you've been trying to get jobs and get those successful things happening so any thoughts on this i know you have your stones we talked about your stones <laughs> yeah we talked about stones with cat so i have my um stones that are helping me with my drive for college right now under my pillow but yeah i i guess i kind of knew that there's spells to help with like jobs and interviews mm -hmm. and stuff but i've never really thought about it so this was a really interesting section for me i also really did enjoy the way that they described the way the different elements are related to the tarot signs as mm -hmm. someone who likes tarot so this was the the highlight of this section for me nice so then we had i'm gonna read this <laughs> do it because i think it's so funny that like last episode i talked about like i have raymond buckland's big blue book of witchcraft and i have raymond buckland's a book of spirit communications and i have all this like and then they mentioned it in this book <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny yeah um so it says charms auctions house appropriately is called buckland's raymond buckland has dozens of books on magic and the occult among them buckland's complete book of witchcraft and then other ones and then um, uh researching a show on witches would be difficult if not impossible without seeing ray buckland's name which i always realized that was the inspiration because they were doing their research for these things like aha aha, aha. <laughs> and you know it's so funny because that's exactly the same time period that i discovered raymond buckland's complete book of witchcraft yeah and so having wicca being set on a show and buckland's i was just like all these words are buzzwords for me right now this is my favorite <laughs> show in the world yeah super fun mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm and i'm trying to remember if it was this book that led me to those books or not it might have been because i know i bought this because of charmed mm -hmm. and then i started venturing out to other books and i i pulled out my copy of it the other day and i was I had all my stuff filled out like you know, those little questionnaires at the end of each oh, yeah. chapter i'm like oh my gosh i was writing stuff in here <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, <crazy>. it's so <laughs> funny i wanted to mention one thing under the ask for guidance it, it did give like um signed in air signed in water signed yes. in air, signed in fire some of these i think like you said are, are a little bit over like waiting for it to rain or um i personally actually have a a two different binary divinatory uh, suggestions for people out there who might want to try things um it did give one in here but i i did i have to admit it again was also very involved multiple stones uh perfectly found a big bowl of sand <laughs> it was a lot of stuff yeah. um i'm actually a huge fan of of 
being practical with my supplies. So I actually have a specific div- set of divination bones. They're chicken bones, like chicken leg mm-hmm. bones. I got it from rotisserie chicken, boiled them, cleaned them up, made sure they were okay to work with. Um, and I, I worked on a, a very specific spell for them to become my divinatory bones and to give me an answer. Um, so when I ask yes or no questions, there's three of them. I toss them into my space. I ask the question and, um, if two or more of the stone of the the bones are in a vertical way, that's a yes. If two or more are in a horizontal shape, that means it's a no. Um, there's also ways you can get uh, uh, stones that you find, or you know those like marbles you put in a plant, like a fake planter you can get at the oh, craft yes. store. Mm-hmm. Those are great. You can get two different bags, one white, one black, or just one clear, one something else, something very, very different. You need two juxtapositioning colors. You put them in a nice bag, swirl them around. You can't feel the difference between them. You ask a question, you draw out one of them. One of the colors is for yes, one of the colors is for no. Um, You can go even a little bit more old school with it. Um, I do like the way it it mentioned the runes in here because you can get a little bit more specific with the answers to the question you're asking. I think that's really fascinating. But those are two great and and very inexpensive ways that you could could build yourself a set of binary divination systems. I've even seen someone do uh, playing cards, shuffle up really well, red is for yes, black is for no. Mm. Mm. Everyone's got some cards in their back pocket. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I thought the the candle one was fun. Where you light three candles, whichever is the last one standing is your answer. I mean, yes. you have to wait a while. Those better be <laughs> birthday yeah. candles. Yeah, <laughs> right. Get something small. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not getting those tapers. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> like how long do I have to wait? I have to leave the house. It's a fire hazard. <laughs> like... <laughs> my friend, my friend actually asked me a couple of years ago to help with something that was on a really personal matter. And I said, okay, come over. I got my book. I need you to bring me a green candle. I have everything else. He went to the grocery store and the, you know, went to the scented candle, a candle section. And just, they had all they had were these huge, cheap scented candles. And he came over with this like $13 massive candle in a glass thing. And I was like, Oh my God, like <laughs> this is supposed to burn down. <laughs> and he was like, what? It's all they had. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? We'll respectfully snuff it out. How's that? <laughs> but he couldn't use yeah. it again. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> All right. And then they brought in the day of the week correspondences and the elemental correspondences. You can get those in most books of this nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge um, lover of uh, the days of the week. Their planetary cor- correspondences and the virtues of those planetary spirits. Um, I think that's a, a, a very versatile tool that I think any any good practitioner should should take the time to learn. Yeah, and it's nice to have these, you know, broken down and not not necessarily have to go over them. But if you're looking for a specific quality, you can mm-hmm. go and like cross reference this. Like, oh, okay, that fits, and it's just really great. Resource. exactly like we're talking about love spells you might do that on a friday because that corresponds with venus mm-hmm. um if you're trying to do protections for your for uh, for yourself your body your your house i might do it a sunday because that's the of power and potency if you're wanting to put up wards something that's going to fend off um malign spirits your way then i might do it on a, a tuesday to work with mars yeah all right and that's the end of this section that's all i got <laughs> <laughs> nice. So anything that we didn't cover that you are dying to say? Just, I think I already said it. I love Charmed and I was really excited to, to, to be on the show and talk about it and relate um, my witchcraft with my one of my favorite shows. Um, I do think the way that Campfire Stories and Bardic Tales once were the entertainment of people and and yesteryear um i think that movies tv shows and uh, and and modern books are how we we really share that information now and i think the way that folklore informed a lot of magic and witchcraft i think we can take adaptations and inspirations from our entertainment as well um charmed the show salem actually incorporates a lot of, of real witchcraft into it um obviously the craft there are so many aspects of our modern entertainment that we can be inspired and motivated by when it comes to how we want to adapt our individual crafts. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Our witch media is very fun. Um, it is. Because, and you can say like, oh, I, this, this is real. This, I can learn something from this. Or this is completely off the wall, but it's still fun. But, <laughs> so, I have, but I'm having a good time. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> I can't wait for like, Agatha all along. That's that's the one uh, I know I'm gonna have I know time. that trailer. Oh, oh it looks so good. <laughs> and Wiccan, yeah. Wiccan's in it. So excited. And Wicked coming out and and yeah. and on Thanksgiving. Oh, it's just it's a good year for witches. Yeah. It is. Bringing back those 90s feels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So any final thoughts? I have final thoughts. I'm just gonna say um stuff we already talked about. Like I just found the steps for spell casting far more interesting than the spells themselves, but I also prefer, you know, the simple, straightforward ritual. Like this, none of the stuff I'm gonna do that. <laughs> that's, it, muddy, it muddies things for me a lot. So I'm glad that we talked about that because I don't have the patience to want to think that hard <laughs> or try that hard. Have you had the author on the show? No, I don't. I don't even know where to contact. Her. Wonderful. Then I'll say. But <laughs> okay. Then I don't mind saying what I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, I totally agree with you. Uh, I think that this is a really fun book, but I think a lot of it, in my opinion, it feels as though it's been glamored up a lot. It's been uh, filling a word count, maybe even. Um, <laughs> as someone who writes books, you can say oh, that. You know, you know I, mean, <laughs> I felt that sometimes it was, again, heavy on ceremony. And mm -hmm. um, I do think that there's a lot of material in here that could be very easily and, and functionally adapted. But I think sometimes there are just one too many steps that make it feel as though a new practitioner reading this might feel they have to do all of them. And that's really not necessary. Mm -hmm. It can be very overwhelming. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and yeah, it does feel very like almost pretentious in a way. Like, ah, uh. there is a lot of pretension in the way in which yeah. some of these, these rights are yeah. set up. Um, that's okay. Some some practitioners feel yeah they want to give it all and that's totally cool <laughs> i would not malign them for such no some people want to be showy and a little flashy and, and and maybe just being in it and being you know incorporating everything they can and being you know in that zone mm -hmm. feels good for them they, they enjoy great. their that witchiness yeah and i think this section did a good job of something on my journey into researching witchcraft, I've been noticing more and more how everything's related. So even just learning from Marshall right now that even the days of the week can be related to gods and goddesses and their powers, that was like something I've never heard before. So I would tell any aspiring witches, like, do your research and see how everything is intertwined with each other. <laughs> well, for, um, for anyone out there who wants to learn some more, have some free information, if you go to the um, link tree in the bio of any of my um, social medias, uh, Witch of Southern Light, uh, I have lots of free resources, free lists of hundreds of herbs um, uh, and their magical correspondences, uh, working with the days of the week, uh, the, the planetary squares, the, the planets and the powers they have themselves, um, ways to make herbal tinctures and and... I believe working with stones and colors as well. So there's lots of free resources and information in there. Yeah, your content is so cool. so worthwhile and so abundant. And yeah, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so one of the last things I have is tips for future white letters, and this is the moral or lesson that we learned from today. Oh, well, really? Just messengers, guides? Think of us as guardian angels for good witches. Tips for tips future, future white I was out being a force of good in the universe. I'm just going to go with what we talked about before. Um, I liked what you said about protection spells. So always incorporate that protection element to your magic. That's a good takeaway. Absolutely. Mine would be um, gratitude. Be grateful. A lot of times I think we take the simple things really, really for granted that when we finally don't have them, uh, we forget how important they are to us. Uh, so just in general, I think constantly trying to remember and keep a, a centered level of gratitude puts you on the mindset mm -hmm. to be much more open to lots of things in life in the first place. Um, and being a witch, I'll tell you right now, I better be open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, this chapter made me think of an original saying that I can Ooh. throw out there, uh, with great power, <laughs> there must come great responsibility. So original. <laughs> oh my gosh. So original. I know. But I think that. 
especially with it talking about like love spells and other like things that take away somebody's will i think we need to remember like if you wouldn't want it done to you don't do it to somebody else mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. cool p is for poll hmm. another p imagine that p is for poll the question this week is are you most likely to cast a spell for protection love uh your career or wealth or happiness slash guidance Hmm. I don't know what I would say. I was. I guess I would do protection. I would agree. I would pick protection. I feel like I'm constantly updating my protections, just in case. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be selfish. I'm gonna say career wealth, just because that's the mindset yeah, I'm in right now. I'm trying to get a better job. Yeah, as anticipating that because yeah, it's all yeah. your which state of life you're in right now and get that back. Really, yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's it. We did it, everybody. <laughs> So Yay. thank you for gracing us with your presence today, Marshall. This was wonderful. Would you mind if I told the audience where to find me? That was my next question. Oh. Where can we find you? So <laughs> <laughs> perfect. You beat me to the punch. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought you, I thought you were like almost about to stop the recording. My bad. No, no. Go Great. ahead. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much for having me on. It's been truly wonderful. Uh, anytime I get to talk to, uh, about Charmed is is always a Charmed time for myself. Yeah. Uh, if, if people want to find Aww. me, uh, you can find me at Witch of Southern Light on uh, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. Um, please buy my book, Cunning Words, A Grimoire of Tales and Magic, available on Amazon or... Or any uh, of the other ones. <laughs> right, or, or, or barnesandnoble.com. Um, if you are in a cult shop, and listening my book is available on ingram spark and i have a second book um coming out october 1st the red mother um and don't forget to give us a a listen at southern bramble a podcast of crooked ways um come listen to us gab about uh queer witchcraft stuff all right well sean where can we find you i'm mostly on instagram under sean perrett but you can follow me on tiktok as well i post mostly on tiktok concerts music i love music but you can also find videos from Solving for X, our X-Men podcast on either one. And my link tree will take you to any of our previous podcasts, like Hanging with the Hollowells, The Marvelous Galaxy of Disney, or I always forget one, Once Upon a Cult. There's always one I forget. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can find me at my personal Instagram, KJEEZY87, or follow this podcast on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at Words of the Witches. Or the other one that I don't like to talk about, <laughs> the ex Twitter one, uh, at Words of Witches. Um, yeah, so we will see you next week for part five. Actually, the, the final part of this book. So we'll be finishing the book next week. Uh, so thanks for listening, Spellwarders. Your destiny still awaits. Ba -da -ba -da.